Hook it and cook it. From the catch to the kitchen, it's your front row seat to learn mouthwatering new ways to fix seafood. It's time for Hook It and Cook It. Welcome to Hook It and Cook It. I'm your host, Frank Willem. Today we have another mouthwatering masterpiece for you, and it's a twofer, a Kobe specialty recipe and an oyster side dish. But before we cook it, we gotta hook it. Let's go cast that line. Over the years, we've fished for cobia a lot. Sight fishing for them and seeing the brown back of the cobia as it chases the bait and then the pearl white belly as it rolls on it is one of my favorite types of fishing. Cobia are migratory fish and are favorites of recreational anglers as well as aquaculture fisheries. Their meat is firm and white, suitable for cooking just about any way you choose. That's why we targeted this species on a recent trip. We left on my sport fish Vixen one morning along with three chefs from Jackson and three from the Gulf Coast including Scott Weinberg from the Blowfly Inn. Our plan was to warm up with some snapper action and then go searching for cobia. It turned out to be quite a trip. As soon as we pulled up on one of our wrecks, we immediately began catching some nice sized red snapper. But once we had our crew fired up, it was time to go for the cobia. The first few were a little small and we released them. We then decided to move to another spot and boy, did that pay off big. At one point, we even had three 40 pound cobia hooked up at the same time. Then with a box full of fish, we headed back home, ready to fire up the stove and cook up a feast. It was a great trip. And I especially enjoyed the opportunity to fish with great angler and chef Scott Weinberg. We've got some cobia now, and we're gonna get Chef Scott Weinberg to show us how to do it upright. But first, he's gonna show us how to make a tasty oyster side dish with green onions, butter, Creole seasoning, and a sauce that'll blow you away. He's even gonna give us a tip on how to tell when our oysters are cooked to perfection. Stay with us. Welcome back to Hook It and Cook It. I'm your host, Frank Willem. Later, you're gonna learn how to make a special cobia dish like a master. But first, let's show you how to make an awesome oyster appetizer with Chef Scott Weinberg from the Blowfly Inn in Gulfport, Mississippi. Take it away, Scott. What I wanted to do is incorporate the crawfish monica sauce that I'm gonna use later on uh, for the uh, cobia special. I'm gonna incorporate that into this dish as well, so if someone makes it at home, they can use it for both dishes. Great. All right, Frank, what we're going to do is we're going to start out with some melted butter, mm -hmm. which uh, I think you, you see that I use butter in a lot of my dishes. Uh, next, we're going to put, these are fresh guff oysters, because mm -hmm. you always want to use fresh oysters, especially when we have the best in the world. Now, do you try to drain as much of the liquid off as you can? For this dish, I do. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't want a, a lot of oyster liquid in there. Uh, and then I'm going to use some of our uh, Creole seasoning that we make in-house. And no, you can't have the recipe. <laughs> I wasn't even going to ask. A lot of that. And then, of course, some fresh garlic, because you can never have too much garlic. So we're going to put plenty of that in there. And last but not least, we're going to have some green onion in there. Now what we want to do, just kind of incorporate all this together and let it, let the flavors come together. I know oysters is the one thing that you don't want to overcook. How do you decide when they're done? Well, uh, when, you're, when you're sauteing them like this, when they start to curl, that's when you know that they're, they're done enough to, uh, to serve. And I'll show you as that happens. The heat will make that happen fairly quick. And then what I'm going to do at the end of the dish, uh, just as they're starting to get done and just as everything heats up, I'm going to add some of the crawfish monica sauce in here. And that <clears throat> recipe will also be on the website so that our viewers can, want, can make that as well, right? Yes, because they're going to need it for the, the dish later on. How often do you, ha do you make this uh, appetizer? Uh, you know, it's, it's been a little while since we've done this one. Uh, this is kind of our answer to the char grilled oysters you see everywhere. We don't serve oysters on the half shell, but we, we can do them like this for you. It sure looks good. Well, thank you. Thank you. Now, they're just starting to curl up, as you can see right there where the little flaps start to curl. So what I'm going to do is add a little crawfish monica sauce here. 
Now this is one of your proprietary recipes? Yes, yes, the crawfish monica sauce, we make it fresh in-house. And what I'm doing, I, you don't need a whole lot, you just wanna make this a little creamy in here. So we're just gonna add a little bit there. And then just continue to stir it, and they should be getting close to done. As you can see, that thickens that sauce up a little bit. And that, that butter will mix in there with the garlic, and that adds a little flavor to that crawfish monica. Yeah, I can see them beginning to start to curl mm -hmm. just a little bit there, huh? How long have you been cooking this dish? Uh, I came up with this dish probably about 12, 13 years ago. Wow. Yeah, so it's, it's. Uh, I, I love oysters, so I wanted a, a way to eat oysters that was different than what we normally serve, so kind of came up with this. How many recipes do you, have you uh, evolved over the years, you reckon? Well, <laughs> when we first bought the Blowfly uh, 18 years ago, or working on 18 years, they didn't have recipes. They just, they came in and they just cooked it up. And it was, and, and don't get me wrong, it was good food, but, People want consistency, so we worked on the recipes over the years, and it's evolved over the years. Uh, but but all of our recipes are standard now for, for all of our dishes that we serve every day. And then we come up with daily specials depending on what we can get fresh. Mm -hmm. And what do you think is your, the key to Blowfly In that makes you different and better? Uh, I like to think our food is delicious uh, and our customer service. And my, my waitresses have been there forever, and they do a great job. I mean, they, they we've had waitresses that have been there over 40 years. Gosh. Yeah. That was before you, you bought the Blowfly Inn, right? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, well, most of my waitresses have been there since before I bought it. There's there's quite a few of them that have been there over 18 years. Wow, that's incredible. Which you just don't see in a whole lot of places, oh, so gosh. it's nice to see. All right, so these are, these are done. We're done enough for this dish. So what we're going to do, we're going to... Take the oysters and plate them up like that. And you want plenty of oysters in there. And then you want some, don't you? Absolutely. Okay, so we're gonna plate up another one. And normally, I know we're a little bit tight for time today, but normally, do you put this in the oven then afterwards for a little bit? Uh, yeah, yeah, what I, what I would do uh, normally is put some Italian breadcrumbs on top and, uh, and some Parmesan cheese and heat that in the oven until the breadcrumbs are toasted. Uh, but today we're going to skip that step. We are going to put the Parmesan cheese on top. And what I want to do is put just a little more sauce on these. Not a whole lot, because you want plenty of sauce. All right. And then I got the Parmesan cheese over here. And you want to use plenty of Parmesan cheese. This is the, the shredded Parmesan. They call it the fancy Parmesan tea cheese. Now, do, if, do you put this on there first if you're putting the breadcrumbs on and toasting them? No, I put the breadcrumbs on first and then this on top. And, and then toast it? Yes, and then toast it in the oven for, it doesn't take but about 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah, and that adds a little texture in there too as well. Mm -hmm. Well, Scott, if this is supposed to be an appetizer, it's working because it's, <laughs> it's certainly got my taste buds fired up here. I'm going to try half to taste this. It looks delicious. I love oysters, and I can see that these aren't cooked too much. They get rubbery. I don't know if you cook them too Yeah, much. yeah. You want them cooked just till they curl, and then they're, they're perfect mm. for this kind of dish. The oysters are perfect, and the, the flavors are, no, oh, that's, that's, that's outstanding. Well, thank you. Thank you. You can take a little garlic bread and, and dip that in there, and that's, mm. that's good as well. That's an excellent dish. I love that. Well, thank you. Well, the oyster appetizer dish was great, but stay tuned because upcoming is a cobia dish that's amazing. All right, the time has come to get that cobia on the stove. Lemonfish, also called cobia or ling, is a very mild fish. So let's see how Scott's gonna cook it. Well, today I'm gonna do a lemon fish dish that uh, is gonna be over roasted uh, Cajun potatoes and with a crawfish monica sauce. Well, if it's as good as the trout poncha train you did last time, I'm in for a treat. Well, thank you, I hope it is. Well, let's get started. All right, all right. Let's start getting these pans hot. And what I have here are some potatoes that I cut up and then I boiled them in some crab bowl to give them a little flavor. And I'm gonna put a little melted butter in my dish here. Do you rinse them after you boil them, or just leave the crab bowl, whatever no. crab bowl's on there? Crab bowl's on them. Yeah, yeah. You want that? You want a little heat on this? So let's uh, turn this up a little bit. And that was butter you just added there? Yeah, a little melted butter. And I'm gonna put the potatoes in here. It's about uh, a cup and a half of potatoes. And we're gonna get that going. You dice them before you boil them? Mm-hmm. I dice them before I boil them. That way, that that uh, that flavor can absorb into the potato itself. And and you'll see when you taste it that it's got a little bit of kick to it. And now I'm just going to add a little of the magic dust, a little Creole seasoning. I think you gave us a recipe for that last time, didn't you? Yeah, Could you repeat if that? I, if I did, I'm probably out of a job. <laughs> 
All right, and now I want to add, this is a, uh, a country pleasing sausage. This is made uh, south of Jackson, Mississippi. So it's a Mississippi product because I like to use all local when I can. Uh, and it's an excellent sausage. The, the, I use the regular, but their, their jalapeno and cheddar is really good as well. So we'll put that in there, about a half a cup. Okay. And then here I have some corn, fresh corn that I boiled with the potatoes. And so they have that crab boil flavor as well. And then I just took it off the cob. So about half a cup of that. Mm -hmm. And then I have some uh, uh, bell pepper, red and green bell pepper, and some onion that I sauteed. And so I've got about half a cup of that that I put in there. And then of course you want a little fresh garlic. It doesn't take a whole lot. So I'm gonna put about a, a quarter tablespoon in that. And your garlic is fresh always, right? Oh yeah, we, we, we do that ourselves. So they just don't get the same flavor if you get the, the bottled uh, pre-cut garlic. It sure smells better, I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, now we're just going to stir it up a little bit. Oops. And you want this uh, to get hot all the way through. This is a dish, you can cook this stuff ahead of time, which, which I did. And, uh, and, and it heats up while you're sauteing it. So it, it really is good. You can prep it the day before, cook it the next day. Um, it's easy to do. How long do you cook the potatoes so they don't get overdone when you do this? Well, you cook them until they're just just done. You don't want them to, to see how they've held their shape. Mm -hmm. You don't want them to, to fall apart like you would for, say, a potato salad or something like that, or mashed potatoes. So, because this will finish up the cooking process, mm -hmm. but they're, they're just al dente, I guess, is what you would call it. Okay. And so you're just going to keep stirring that. You want everything to get hot all the way through. So that'll take a minute. So while that's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and get the fish on, make sure we're up to temp here. All right, now this is a fresh lemon fish caught right out here in the Gulf. Uh, you catch them all the time, so you know how it is, but you want a nice fresh piece of fish. Where do you get your seafood? Uh, I get it from uh, Quality Seafood in Biloxi, uh, Desport Seafood in Biloxi, and Seymour and Sons Seafood in Biloxi. Those are my three main suppliers. I, I like to use the local guys when I can. We're going to let that uh, start cooking there. And that's got magic dust on it too, right? Yeah, that's got the magic stuff on it. We, we make our own Creole seasoning in-house because we feel like that most of the other Creole seasonings have too much salt in them. And although we like salt, we just don't like that much salt. We like to be able to control the amount of salt we put in a dish. You make a lot of your own sauces. You like your dressings, don't you? Absolutely. We make uh, most of our dressings are homemade in-house. Uh, our ranch, blue cheese, Thousand Island, uh, our remoulade sauce. We make all that in-house. You do that because you think it tastes better, or is it easier, or cheaper? Or? Well, I, I, I like it better. I mean, I, I, I would put our ranch dressing up against anybody's, but all our dressings are good. What's your secret on that? Well, I put a little carrot in there, uh, believe it or not, in the ranch dressing, which you probably won't see anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, so my, uh, the, the restaurant that I work for in D.C., I, I asked him if I could use his recipe. I can't take credit for that one. That's, that's his. <laughs> At least you're honest. Yeah. Now, I know the, uh, the new blow fly in is up pretty high. Uh, before Hurricane Katrina, uh, things were a little difficult when the tropical storms came in, weren't they? <laughs> yeah, just a little. Uh, you know, we had had, this is, Hurricane Katrina was our third hurricane. Uh, George got us about five feet. Uh, Isidore got us about three and a half feet, and we rebuilt after each one of those. And then Katrina just was 28 feet over the roof. Uh, I mean, you saw it firsthand, so you know how it was. But uh, so we had to, uh, luckily I have a great landlord, and he rebuilt it 18 feet in there. So chances are you're not going to have another flooding episode, huh? If they do, we're all in trouble. <laughs> One of the things I like about your restaurant is the deck out there and uh, the wildlife. There's an alligator that hangs around there, isn't there? We have we have a couple of alligators hanging out there this year. Uh, in the past, it's usually only been about one uh, uh, every once in a while, too. But this year, we had up to three uh, out there at one time. Uh, last time I was there, I, I actually saw a new tree as well. Oh, did you? Now, I haven't seen that. I have not seen that. He was just kind of passing by, but he was putting <laughs> a little show for us. Really? Well, we'll have to uh, catch it. One of us have to catch it, and we'll cook it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, potatoes are just about done, so I'm going to turn those down a little bit while we wait on the fish to get done. Now, how long do you cook the uh, cobia? Uh, this is a little thicker piece of uh, cobia, so I'm going to cook it probably about three and a half minutes on each side uh, until it just it'll start flaking apart when it when it gets to be done. 
and uh, that's when it's perfect. And then we'll plate this up and put a little crawfish monica sauce on top of it. Now the crawfish monica sauce, I know. You, I think you said you're going to give us a recipe, but mm -hmm. could you tell us a little bit about the sauce, what's in it? Sure, uh, heavy whipping cream, uh, you have some butter, uh, a little blonde roux, um, of course crawfish, and then some spices in there. Uh, it's a very simple sauce to make, so people won't have a problem making this at home if they want to try it at home. Oh, it sure looks good, I'll tell you that. Well, thank you. All right, let's see here. So how many years total have you been uh, a chef? Well, I, 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 people call me a chef, but I'm not. I mean, I've learned a lot over the years in the kitchen, uh, but I've never been classically trained. But I've been doing this for about 24 years now. I've eaten at your restaurant a number of times. <laughs> You're a chef. Well, thank you. Thank you. But it's always, it's always, you know, you, you like you like to be in the kitchen. You like to put out a product that people like. So that's well, one that's thing about feeling. to be successful, I think, at anything, you have to have a passion for it. You sure seem to have a passion. I do. I do. I love the business. I've been in it a long time, and uh, I thoroughly enjoy it. Well, you went out with us not too long ago with uh, some boys from Jackson, <laughs> and uh, they kind of outfished you, as I recall. Well, uh, I, I don't know if they, uh, they, they might have outfished me, but they didn't outcook me. No, they didn't outcook <laughs> it, that's for sure. <laughs> Yeah, we had a great time. That, that was a great trip. Uh, I think it was three, three chefs from Jackson and uh, three chefs from the coast, and we really all had a, had a fantastic time. That was a great trip. Scott, do you, do you have to horse him a little bit? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, put up a good fight. There we go. That cook-off was afterwards was really something special. Yeah, that was fun. That was fun. We don't we don't get to do that very often as, as, as chefs. We, we, we're in the kitchen most of the time, so we, we don't get to do that very often. So we enjoy it when we can. Well, we'll see if we can't get you out there some more. <laughs> I, we, we're always up for that. <laughs> The thing that reminds me about that, that I think about that trip a lot, is that King Mackerel. Do you remember that? I remember that, that Andy was able to, to make King Mackerel actually very good. You know, people here, they throw it away when they catch it and don't, don't really cook it. But he blanched it in some white wine, and we, the other five of us told him that it wasn't going to work. And it absolutely worked. i got to give him credit for that. I remember tasting it. I was a little apprehensive, but it, it, was, it was good. It was really but good. the thing I thought was, was interesting is that he had had a Kobe on, and the Kobe had spit the jig, and as he retrieved the Kobe out of the water, you remember the King Mackerel jumped into the boat. I remember. I remember. Yeah, that was uh, that was a little exciting. It was. We got it on video. Yeah. Of course, he was. Everybody in the boat at that point was doing a little scrambling. It, that fish got some instant respect, as I recall. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. You don't want to let one of those bite you. Absolutely not. All right. Well, I think we're about done here. That that fish is see how it's starting to flake apart there. So let's uh, let's get this plated. Now, my favorite part. I have a date with the plate when we come back. And I have a feeling it's going to taste every bit as good as it looks. All right, let's get this plated up. I'm going to take these Cajun potatoes here. Spread that across the plate. Get plenty of everything there. And then I'm going to take the piece of lemon fish and set that right on top. And then the crawfish monica sauce. Make sure you get plenty of crawfish in there. There we go. All right. There's your crawfish monica sauce. Let's wipe that up. And then we're going to make it pretty. A little paprika around the edge. Chopped parsley, and then we're going to top it off with a little shredded parmesan. And there you have it a fresh lemon fish dish straight from the Blowfly Inn. I'll tell you what, it looks wonderful. It's just, I hate to, I hate to even <laughs> bite into it. Mmm. Mmm. I thought your trout. The poncho train dish was good. I, 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 you outdid yourself. There's no doubt about it, Scott. That is excellent. Well, thank good you. Dish. Thank you. I enjoy making this dish. This is a fun dish to make. And this is something that they can cook at home as well, and the recipe's on the website. And as I mentioned, we're here at the Lynn Meadows Discovery Center in Gulfport, and we've got the executive director, Cindy DeFrancis, here to tell us a little bit more about it. 
Glen Meadows Discovery Center was started in 1998 and we were the first children's museum in the state of Mississippi. Our mission is to inspire children and families to interact in educational, hands-on, interactive setting right here in all of these wonderful exhibits that we have for all of our families and children. We believe in lifelong learning here at Lynn Meadows Discovery Center. One of the things that we do here for um, adults is we have adult cooking classes in our Viking kitchen and we try to do that at least once a week on Tuesday nights. That's the night that we try to um, provide cooking classes for adults. Emerald Lagasse and Viking came together and designed the kitchen. Viking donated all of the appliances and Emerald helped design the kitchen. And so the kitchen became a new part of the museum. And so now we have cooking classes for adults, we have cooking classes for kids, we have cooking classes for families. Thanks for joining us today on Hook It and Cook It. And we'd like to thank Scott Weinberg from the Blowfly Inn for cooking up another one of his specialties. And we'd also like to thank the Lynn Meadows Discovery Center for the use of their kitchen. Join us next time on Hook It and Cook It.